Welcome to Learn C, Lesson 5. Um, this is the first of a series of about three or four lessons that are going to end up with a final product um, that's going to look like a pretty scalable averaging program that we eventually could use to um, calculate the average of many, many numbers. Um, the first step on the road to that is how to store um, data in different um, uh, in a different way, input data in a different way. And the, I'm going to introduce the concept of an array. Okay, so uh, first things first, let's uh, look at, um, let's make a new uh, program here. File, new, project. Lesson five. Let's store on the desktop. C code. Let's make a new left thing. Lesson five. Let's go in there and save it. <clears throat> and then I'm going to save all. Sure. Okay. Now I'm going to I'm going to do a weird thing. I'm going to close this. Close project. File. I'm going to open a project. I'm going to go up one. I'm going to go lesson three. Then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take this. Control C. Copy it. File. Close project. File. Open. No errors, no warnings. Run. And so it still works. It's the same, it's the same program as what we did in lesson three. That's my advice on how to um, create a new program. If you have a previous program that's a good template for it, open a new project, but then you have to for Dev C, it's best to close it and then open up the old project, cut copy, and then put it the and then close that project and only have one project open at a time. If you open up a different main, sometimes it freaks out. That's it's just my it's just um, a weird thing that's happened once or twice. So you know, just being careful about keeping one project open at a time. So that's just a little advice about Dev C. So this is how to at calculate the average of three numbers. How would we calculate the average of four numbers? Well, we'd say D, E, and then we'd add D equals eleven. And you'd say plus C plus E divided by 4. Right? So we added one, another um, number to get the average of. Six point seven five. Okay, great. How about four hundred or a thousand? We have to have A, B, C, D, E, D. D it got through Z. Then we have A, 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 B. B. You know, there, we would get through a huge, huge laundry list of of um, variable names. You know, we would have to declare every single one of them. Wow, that's really a pain. That, and in fact, it, it makes this strategy for this type of program completely unscalable. It would be crazy to come up with a million different names. Moreover, this app, this is problematic too, but for now, let's just deal with the, the, the way that data is stored. And so for lesson five, I'm going to introduce a new concept. I only have one variable, A. But, it's, and I'm going to go back to taking the average of three numbers. It's going to have three elements in it. So, inst so instead of 
um, instead of um, having A, B, and C, we have A0, A1, and A2. Um, it starts at 0, not 1. We're going to get into that more. And so this, you'll say A0 plus A1 plus A2 all divided by 3. Okay, to change that up, and so this is a new concept called arrays. So it still works, it works the same. So instead of A, B, and C, we have A0, A1, A2, 3. Now we only have to declare one thing. If we needed a thousand variables, we just put a thousand there. It's still pretty, you know, I haven't convinced you yet that this is better because it's still a lot more. You know, you just have to do all these variables. Well, we're going to come up with ways to scroll through arrays. So uh, don't worry, that's coming up in a future lesson. But um, that's the basics of what an array is. There's two analogies, right? The first analogy is in, um, is in Excel. Right, so here we have A1. We can put three in there. Two, we can put five in there, and a three, we can put eight in there. That's this is this cell number is cell a one. This cell number is cell a three. So, at some level, the the analogy of an array of an array in C is the same as a column in Excel. That's a that's a pretty good analogy. So that's one type of um, that's one type of way to interpret an array is that now you instead of having three different variables you have one variable and you can index through a, a certain number of points. Notice that in C you have to declare how many rows there are, right? So you have to do that. It's not always one million forty eight thousand five hundred seventy six or however many are in Excel, right? So so you have to declare how many rows you want, right? In the beginning. And then you can just get, um, and then you can index it. The other difference is this 0, 1, 2. Why 0? This is a way that some computer scientists um, describe uh, memory and how variables are stored in memory. Each of these blue boxes represents a, a chunk of memory on your computer that's used to store uh, a floating point value. So it's um, so many bytes. With individual variables, the way the C program does it is if you declare three separate variables, it just finds three spaces in memory. And they don't have to be contiguous. They don't have to be near each other. They could be anywhere. It's likely that they'll be contiguous, but who knows, right? Um, and so you can just put um, three in that top blue square and five in that second blue square and eight in that third blue square. And, and C, the C programming language knows that when you want what's in C, it knows to go to that memory location. That's what goes on behind the scenes in a computer program. An array is to when you declare it as a single variable and an array, what it does is it finds three blocks of three, three memory locations to store three floating point numbers all in a row. And so now you just have one variable, A. And all you need to do to find out which one of these uh, memory locations you want is the offset of A. So the first block is I want to go zero offsets from the variable A. And then A1 is I want to go one offset, one block down. And A2 is I want to go two offsets down. That's why C does zero, one, and two, because it describes the offset from the initial memory location that A provides. So that's the basics of uh, why um, C uses zero, it gets even more complicated um, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, other ways to describe uh, memory locations in C. But this is the basics of it, is that when you declare it as a variable, it makes all the memory locations contiguous. And you're only that little number inside the square brackets is just describing the offset location. That's it. That's the um, this lesson on arrays. Um, one last little um, 
a comment about the C programming language. Um, uh, starting at 0, 1, and 2 is not common with a lot of other programming languages. And so it's C people have a chip on their shoulder about 0, 1, and 2, and sometimes they're really smarmy about it. A lot of C programming books I have, chap the first chapter is chapter 0, the second chapter is chapter 1, and so on. And so um, uh, that's just one little thing to remember is that the starting at 0, 1, and 2 instead of 1, 2, and 3 um, for um, program this particular programming language um, is uh, is a big thing. So that's the that's probably the biggest take home lesson of this uh, lesson. Okay, uh, lesson six next time. Mm -hmm.